On behalf of the entire study team, uh, uh, I will be presenting the highlights of our study. Uh, and this study actually is the result, as I was already mentioned, of a partnership with the DOST Science Education Institute, which two decades ago commissioned UPPI, the Population Institute, the UPSS, UP School of Statistics, and the University of Asia and the Pacific to project demands in the SNT human resources uh, of the country for the period 2000 to 2010 in the government, academe, and industry sectors, respectively. After an introduction and a brief background regarding our current research, I will be proceeding to an overview of the SNT workforce as seen from data source from the Labor Force Survey. Then I discuss outlooks of the industry, academe, and government sectors based on various empirical analysis of data from the population censuses, population projections, as well as several administrative data sources. Then I uh, move on to ways forward to wrap up the presentation before proceeding with the Q&A. To start with, we are well aware that while science and technology is the backbone of the innovation ecosystem and economic growth, and of course, we heard from Secboy earlier, com competition globally, we want to make ourselves globally competitive. Unfortunately, the country has sadly invested very little in SNT. Our pool of human resources in SNT has been very limited, especially when compared with developing countries in East Asia, such as China, Singapore, Malaysia, that are at the frontiers of innovation. I have often pointed out that in the Philippines, there are twice as many lawyers as there are scientists and engineers. With emerging technologies of the fourth industrial revolution, which we at PIDS refer to as fire, and disruptions in production and supply chains resulting from fire, the increased globalization of labor markets are resulting in new and different sets of demands, opportunities, and challenges across SNT, especially in the next five years which we have to prepare for and anticipate. We note, however, that our study was conducted prior to the pandemic, so there may be even bigger demands now for SNT in the wake of the great reboot that our economy and society will need to do. Both the public and se private sectors are trying to retrofit amid the, amid the new normal conditions as we continue to face the challenges posed by the ongoing pandemic. Given these possibilities, it is crucial for policymakers, educational institutions, as well as current and future learners to anticipate future demands in the labor market arising from these rapid changes in the world economy. Reports from the World Economic Forum, the Asian Development Bank, and the World Bank suggest that the dis disruptive changes in industry and across economies brought about by the use of emerging technologies are reconfiguring business models and demanding new skill sets for the workforce, especially for the period 2020 to 2025. While forecasts vary by industry and region, but momentous change is underway. Governments have to cope with the risks of growing technological unemployment and inequality, and businesses with a shrinking consumer base. Our actions today that will determine whether change mainly results in massive displacement of workers or the emergence of new opportunities. The PIDS in partnership with DOST SEI has undertaken this integrated analysis of specific SNT HR requirements by mixed methods involving a literature review secondary data analysis, and some select key informant interviews with business leaders. Our secondary data analysis involved a time series analysis of data from the quarterly labor force survey from 2020, 2010 to 2018. Also, a supply estimation and demand estimation of the SNT workforce um, using, the, using data from population censuses of 2010 and 2015, 
as well as population projections, and of course, an examination of administrative data on SNP graduates from CHED, licensure examination results on SNP occupations from the PRC, and SNP government positions from DBM. As pointed out earlier, we should note that this study was undertaken prior to COVID and may not be reflective of the disruptions brought about by the current situation. The main limitation of our study is the lack of good quality data on many SNP occupations. As SNP professionals or practitioners constitute only 5% of the country's employed population, the usual sample size of the LFS or the Labor Force Survey for the period 2010 to 2018 is not sufficiently large to provide good quality estimates of the number of employed in SNP occupations. Further, labor force survey respondents need not necessarily know with certainty the detailed science and technology occupations of all household members. Maybe very high groupings they could identify. Also, LFS data used in our study comprise only 36 quarters from 2010 to 2018, while time series analysis usually needs at least 50 observations to produce accurate and reliable estimates. Also, we had a structural break occurring in the LFS data due to a shift from the use of the 1992 PISOC or occupation codes to 2012 PISOC in April 2016. Anyways, given all of these limitations, we just like to give you an indication of main findings of the projected employment growth rates of the SNT workforce. As I mentioned, while we have a poor quality of projected employment growth rates due to the small sample size, when you look at the growth rates using uh, among ICT professionals using exponential smoothing method, the applications, programmers, and systems administrators uh, registered positive growth, while computer programmers, database designers, and administrators, and web-based web and multimedia developers have negative growth rates on ex for exponential smoothing, but their average uh, uh, annual gro employment growth rates from 2016 to 2018, however, are positive. On the other hand, software developers and system systems analysts are reported to have employment contractions for both time series methods. Among engineering professionals, Civil engineer is the only occupation with positive employment growth rates in exponential smoothing and annual growth rate methods. While chemical engineers, electronic engineers, and telecom engineers posted positive growth rates for exponential smoothing, but reporting negative annual growth rates for 2016 to 2018. Meanwhile, average annual growth rates for electrical engineers, environmental engineers, industrial engineers, mechanical engineers and metallurg metallurgical engineers registered positive values um, despite having negative growth rates in ex the exponential smoothing method. The projected growth rates for game developers are lumped with web and multimedia developers. Based on the results of the analysis of the LFS data in our study, we note that the sample size in the LFS should really be increased in order to ensure good quality data for purposes of projecting future SNT human resource requirements. Furthermore, PSA should always include the, the four-digit codes uh, for cross-cutting and emerging occupations. Now, assessing the demand and supply of the STEM workforce in the Philippines is a function of responses to the needs of the changing economy. We thus looked also at data from the population censuses to profile the current labor market conditions and project supply and demand. We classified workers based on five broad fields, life sciences, physical sciences, math and statistics, computing or IT, and engineering. Based on the 2015 pop population census data, we find that there are about 5% of STEM graduates in our labor force. In terms of employment status, nearly all STEM graduates would get employment at uh, about 99.7%. Labor force participation among STEM graduates is also very high at 86.6% versus the uh, national average of 70.5%. 
But we noticed that the labor force participation of female STEM graduates is lower at 72.5% when compared with that of males, 92.7%. To project the future supply of STEM workers, first it's important future STEM workers. And in the figure on the slide, we observe that the highest propensity to join the STEM fields is between the ages of 15 to 19 when they start entering the university. We also notice that computing and IT, as well as engineering fields, appear to attract more students and continue to do so in older age brackets. This reflects the popularity of these disciplines. Another important aspect for projection of the supply and, uh, is the survival rate of STEM workers. In other words, how long would they stay in the labor force? And the figure on the slide shows that the workers in mathematics and statistics leave the labor force very early at 25 to 29 years old. In contrast, workers in computing or IT continue to work even beyond retirement age. Workers from physical sciences, life sciences, and engineering follow a normal decay and retire around the age 55 to 59. Now, combining this production and survival rate information, when we came up with forecast of future supply, we found that we will continue to produce STEM workers, but the highest reduction will be for computing and IT, as well as engineering. We also note that by 2025, there will be more workers with computing or IT background than engineers. But for demand, we were able to compute for future demand by using the forecasted growth for the Philippine economy of course, ma uh, prior to COVID, matching it with our data on worker productivity. Uh, when what we found is that the future domestic demand will be much more in favor for engineers over workers with computing or IT background. Not considering factors regarding the international labor market, we found that we are likely to have a surplus of workers in computing or IT fields in the future. Disaggregating our projected demand by discipline and industry, we found that most of the demand for STEM workers come from other services, those that are not classified under the current uh, Philippine standard uh, uh, codes, or maybe too small to have a separate industry classification. These are the emerging jobs. Demand and supply projections in our study also show that by 2025, there will be an undersupply of SNT workers in life sciences physical sciences, math and statistics, and engineering. Consequently, a need for more graduates in these discipline groups and an oversupply of workers in IT. Consequently, a need for fewer graduates in IT. Hence, it is reasonable to really plan out for more s and graduates but also incorporate this information. While graduates in s and are projected to be generally increasing in s and uh, in, in the next five years, there are factors that have impact on the attainment of these trends. Increasing the enrollment and number of graduates in SNT requires the development of interest among our young on SNT and of their capabilities, as well as the reduction in the number of students in SNT who fail to graduate on time. Also, producing more graduates would not be enough to meet the projected undersupply of manpower in most SNT disciplines. We also need to consider the quality of education. Ensuring the quality of education means working for improvements in teaching quality, school facilities, and ensuring we have qualified faculty and relevant courses and degree programs. In the next slide, we we'll list several questions or issues regarding the production of more graduates and the quality of our current SNT education. On increasing SNT enrollment and producing more graduates, first we should ask. How effective is the K-12 commit the curriculum in producing students with SNT knowledge and skills? And second, how effective are there science sections and science high schools in producing SNT students? Are there enough science sections and science high schools in the country? The K-12 curriculum, science schools, and science sections expose our young to SNT. But if this uh, and if these av three avenues are effective in developing interest skills and capabilities in SNT, 
Plus, of course, we have the influence of the environment, including perceived incomes from s and jobs. Then we would be able to have higher chances of, of attracting the young into s and degree programs. However, we should note that currently, unlike in Korea, we do not have a survey of what our young would like to become when they grow up. The third question is, how effective are the following in reducing the proportion of students in SNT who don't graduate on time? Things like entrance exams, IQ exams, scholarships, financial assistance, counseling, and health care for students. And fourth, what methods are used to match students with degree programs and how effective are they in reducing the percentage of students who fail to graduate on time? Answers to these questions are very important because the number of students earning the SNT degrees on time directly affects the number of new graduates entering the SNT workforce. On quality of education, an indicator of the quality of education is the passing rate in professional regulatory commission examinations for the period 2012 to 2016. However, the average passing rates is lower than 50% in disciplines like marine engineering, agricultural engineering, civil engineering, electronics engineering, geodetic engineering, library science, occupational therapy, radiology uh, technology, midwifery, nursing, respiratory therapy, veterinary, veterinary medicine, and geology. So the following question should be asked. Do schools meet standards on school facilities, including libraries, labs, project working areas, and classrooms? Second, what is the impact of faculty development through PhD scholarships and increased pay and benefits and incentives on faculty retention? Given the re recent decreasing trend in the overall number of faculty as shown by CHED data, we will lack s and teachers by 2022 to 2023. Third, are the current uh, s and degree programs relevant? Two streams of studies are needed to determine relevance of these programs, tracer studies, as well as an approach used uh, by Kismorio et al. in a PIDS study, uh, assessing the Philippine alignment of Philippine higher education with the emerging demands for data science and analytics workforce. Answers to all of these questions and issues would caution the effects, the expected shocks in the labor market from fire technologies. Research studies are extremely essential to find answers to these policy questions. Our study notes that the, the government bureaucracy is the single largest employer of SNT personnel. The largest population of SNT workers are the doctors and nurses in DOH hospitals, instructors and professors in the 102 SUCs, and agri related positions in DA and DAR. SNT plantilla positions are also the majority in the DOH, DPWH, DOST, and in the Philippine Statistics Authority. Immediate salary grade of SNT personnel is uh, salary grade 15, which is about which is about 33,000 pesos a month. The largest unfilled, unfilled positions are those of nurses, medical doctors, and senior level professors in SUCs. An increase in vacancies is also seen for senior engineer positions in DPWH and IT personnel. Aside from current vacancies in the medical field, more nurses and doctors will also be required by government in the future as DOH hospitals expand. And also we've been feeling this in the wake of the pandemic. About half of the faculty population of SUCs are in SNT courses like agriculture and engineering. And it is also in these fields where PhD level faculty members are in very big demand. In DA and DAR, there are more than 12,000 agriculture positions, which are filled by graduates coming from 62 SOOCs offering agri related de degrees. In the D DPWH, most positions are filled except for senior level posts. And it is noteworthy that the DPWH also employs more than 30,000 contractual or project based engineers. DNR employs the most foresters and environmental science graduates in the country. DOST has over 4,000 SRS positions, in, excluding 594 uh, meteorologists in uh, Pagasa. Finally, the PSA employs more than 2,000 statisticians and, co and could possibly require even uh, another 1,000 with the implementation of the National ID program. As mentioned previously, 
most of the SNT positions in government, except those mentioned, uh, are in, uh, easily filled up, except for senior level positions with strict academic requirements. This slide shows the ideal educational attainment of personnel for various types of SNT work. Service and laboratories would uh, require some masters, but uh, mostly bachelor's degree graduates. For research institutes, ideally, this should be a pyramid-like distribution of BS, MS, and then PhDs. Teaching at the college level, an equal uh, number of BS, uh, MS, and PhDs required. And for R&D management, such as in DOST councils, staff members with a technical background are ideal. However, the nature of their work actually dictates a more managerial uh, background for post-grad degrees rather than an MS or PhD in SNT. The lack of applicants with MS, PhD, and management degrees has resulted in many offices removing the requirements of higher degrees for senior level positions. Putting a spotlight on the research and development institutes of DOST, their output as research institutes are comparatively lower than university-based research groups. This can be remedied by hiring more PhDs restructuring their bureaucracy and a promotion system that is based on research productivity and not in terms of years in service. To summarize, the results of our study show the need for investing in SNT human resources to prepare ourselves for the impact of technology. Our failure to invest in SNT in the past is part of the reason why we are in this uh, we are having difficulties amid the pandemic and also making a rebound. While the diverse SNT occupations differ in growth potential in terms of employment, and therefore some occupations appear more crucial than others, the fact that the total SNT workforce constitutes only a small portion, 5% of the country's workforce, underscores the need for government support for most of the SNT disciplines. Those that are marketable uh, in or, and of themselves, like industrial engineering, for example, would not need, need as much support for other fields as in other fields. Disciplines that have declining employment levels but are extremely needed to improve productivity in some sector or industry, such as those that have to do with agriculture, biology, chemistry, and possibly even chemical engineering, should be given more support by government. We provided some specific projections in the study based on the labor force survey, the pop population census and population projections, and various administrative data. The great need of our economy for SNT workers to support its projected growth would require a massive boost in support for current and future SNT workforce. This cannot be attained by the government alone, but should be a joint undertaking involving the private sector as well as the academic institutions, and also the households. As regards demand, there is also a need to encourage our young to go into SNT. In the 1990s and in the early 2000s, we had television programs that tackled, that tackled SNT and mathematics, like the Big Bang Theory and Numbers. Uh, these were very great shows. Uh, show, um, that it made cu children curious about what it is to become a scientist, astronaut, mathematicians. However, we need to ad adapt to the changing times since children and housewives are, are shifting uh, from TV to YouTube, social media. So we need aggressive media campaigns, uh, particularly social media platforms like FB, uh, Instagram, and YouTube. We, we tend to use much of that. They could be used to reach to both students and parents. And it's important to make use of social media influencers, uh, poster boys and poster go girls, for advocating SNT careers. Furthermore, marketing SNT as a financial uh, viable career may entice parents to further boost their children to enter SNT. POST, together with DepEd, may want to seriously consider implementing an annual survey among our students regarding their dream jobs, similar to the survey implemented by Korea's Ministry of Education and Korea's Research Institute for vocational education and training. They have an annual poll on the school age dream job. In one of the Korean novellas I uh, recently watched in, on Netflix called Reply 1988, it was pointed out that Korean children in the 1970s aspired to be part of the military or government. 
while in the 1990s, most children, believe it or not, wanted to become scientists. These days, uh, YouTubers are now on the top list of childhood dream jobs for young Koreans since YouTubers make a lot of money. Knowing these statistics can help uh, DOST uh, we become more strategic in advocacy campaigns, not only with the young but with their parents. Next, it is equally important to understand factors that affect the supply and demand, uh, uh, the supply of work SNT workers. For instance, why are we having fewer female SNT graduates joining the labor force compared to males? Or why are SNT graduates, for instance, in math and statistics, exiting the labor force much earlier than other SNT graduates? Such things should be looked into in more detail in order to obtain behavioral insights and craft necessary policies to incentivize these individuals to participate actively in the economy. Furthermore, it must be noted that generally the highest propensity to join SNT is around the onset of the tertiary level, so financial support should be concentrated at this point in one's life. Furthermore, academic and research in in institutes must be able to produce knowledge through research. Academy must be able to develop talents and innate capabilities of students. It's important that the academy work on developing its capability for quality learning. Academy must be responsive in meeting the manpower and know-how needs of industry, government, and society. Curricula need to be regularly reviewed, revised, and all degree programs abolished with new ones developed. Research agendas of academic and research institutions need to be also reviewed and revised regularly. RDIs of DOST need reshaping to make them less structurally like a regular bureau and more like an academic institution. Forecasts of enrollment and graduates in the next few years based on growth rates show increasing trends in the number of graduates in all SNT discipline groups. Engineering and technology will be the dominant discipline groups in the next IT in the next years in terms of graduates followed by IT related disciplines. It's re recommended that an evaluations of skills taught to engineering and technology students as well as to students in IT related disciplines be undertaken to identify any mismatches between skills currently taught and skills required in the future. There may also be scope to improve not only technical but also soft skills of our learners. A results of these studies would be adjustments in the uh, curricula and research agendas of higher educational institutions, resulting in the production of better graduates, better prepared for jobs of the future. During the 20, 41st annual scientific meeting of the NAST held on July 2019, Dr. Willie Padolina highlighted the possibility of uh, mismatches between skills of the country's graduates in SNT and the skills demanded by jobs. The country may soon be affected by developments in emerging fire technologies and there is a, a need, therefore, to assess degree programs and research agendas of HEIs on their ability and capacity to cope with technological developments and ensure that we have a set of future-ready SNT human resources that will develop a niche for the country and bring us more prosperity. That ends my presentation. Maraming salamat po.